Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Monday, September the 5th and hope you're doing well this morning. It's kind of a rainy day here with me, so I'm, it's kind of a moody day. I like the rain now and again, it kind of soothes me and um, you know, gives you that opportunity to just kind of relax and, and uh, you know, get into the day um, with a nice cup of hot tea. And I've chosen today hibiscus and cranberry, which is a really nice, um, energizing, but um, beautiful tea to drink. So hope you've got a cup of tea or coffee with you. Um, let's just get started on what's going on in the world and uh, I'll share a couple of stories at the end. I hope that um, will inspire you and uh, help you get started with this week. So first of all, um, it is Labor Day weekend still in the United States and Canada. So I'm sure you've um, got lots planned. I hope that the weather holds for you and that you have a really great uh, Monday. The news that I could find in the United States was all focused around the election and Labor Day. So hopefully um, that's where it's going to stay today. A nice easy news day for the United States. It's a very complex country to report news on because you know there's so much local things uh, that go on, so much local news that um, impacts the states, obviously individually. But um, you know, if you've ever got any news that you want to share with me, by the way, just send it along in the comments section below, and we'll you know we'll incorporate it into what we report. So, and, and thank you for being here. Really important that you've taken time today on your Monday to, to, to spend time with 60 and Me. and um, let's get started with what's going on in the world. Now, in China, as I've reported uh, the last few days, the G20 summit is underway. It's an important summit. It's the most, the 20 really richest countries in the world get together to talk about the economy and the big issues that they're all facing. And of course, it's a great opportunity for them to weave in the the more global issues around uh, politics that um, really aren't the, the, the you know, designed to be the, the focus of the session, but but always gets included very good, you know, thankfully. So uh, the city of Hangzhou is greeting these um, great leaders from around the world, and they're all sitting down talking about the really the challenges of underdeveloped countries and uh, how uh, technology and other. Uh, learnings from the from the developed countries can be used to strengthen them. China is positioning itself as the leader of the summit um, to be the kind of the, the example of an underdeveloped country that needs um, and could you know benefit from the support of the of the larger, more developed um, places. So that's a great conversation going on. There's also private um, conversations between, for example, President Obama and um, uh, Vladimir Putin about the situation in Syria. Um, and as you know, the Syrian uh, government is backing the uh, Syrian um, uh, regime and uh, helping them to try to regain the country with um, their air support. And the United States is uh, on the other side. Um, so uh, hopefully they're, they're having a chance to kind of talk through. No progress yet, but I you know, just let them keep on working it. It's gonna just take time. And uh, of course, there's other issues around terrorism, uh, the migrant refugee um, situation, that's all that are all being raised at this summit. So that's why it's uh, so important. So let's wish them all a good week. Now in Hong Kong, there was an election yesterday. It was the first local election since the pro-democratic um, riots that took place a couple of years ago. And Hong Kong, as you probably know, is a very um, complicated um, place because it was under British rule until um, two years ago, I believe it was. I can't remember. Oh, no, it was 1997. What am I saying? It was a while ago when uh, the UK gave Hong Kong back <laughs> to China. And uh, it, was, you know, it was a Chinese territory. But the UK gave up um, leadership and now and it became a Chinese um, country. And but of course, they were had been for years, um, you know, in a different kind of economic mode and, and social mode. So they really didn't want to be controlled by the by the Chinese government in the same way that other Chinese uh, states do. So they had a last two years ago, there was a big democratic, um, pro-democratic riot uh, uh, led by mostly young people who wanted independence for Hong Kong. So the, the elections yesterday were the first real test of this uh, new generation of voters in Hong Kong and this new generation of politicians who want to find a balance between Chinese rule and democratic um, independence. So that's in Hong Kong, and we'll know more about the um, uh, you know the results of that later today. 
And in Germany, another set of elections had a fairly dramatic outcome for uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel. Um, as you know, she's had a, a very open door policy to letting migrant uh, and refugees into Germany. They let what, over one million people into Germany last year. And there is this group, well, there's many groups, but there is a, a particular political party that really used the, um, uh, the situation with the migrants and refugees and the kind of um, disagreement about the open door policy to put their case forward. And in the elections yesterday, they pretty resoundedly beat Angela Merkel's party. So this is the um, AFD party. And they not only didn't want immigrants and refugees coming into Germany, but they extended it really to a very anti-Islamic message in Germany. So this is all a precursor really to the big general election, which is coming up next year. And Angela Merkel's uh, job is going to be on the line. Very, very powerful conversation uh, that could shape the future of Germany. So that's important. Um, in Syria, there's just two developments I wanted to report. Uh, one is that the Turkish government has pushed back the um, uh, the IS fighters from the border of Syria and Turkey. According to them, they are they have now regained that territory. The second thing that's happened is that the uh, the Assad government forces have been attacking again Aleppo in big big numbers on the east side. They control the west already, but they now are really trying to close the door on Aleppo. So putting extra pressure and their efforts, as I said earlier, are supported by the Russian air, air um, defense. Another note, uh, that's a really beautiful note, is on uh, in, in Italy. Uh, Mother Teresa is now Saint Teresa. She was canonized yesterday by the Pope. Uh, this is only 20 years after her death, which is fairly unusual, but she was such a dramatic force for good in the Catholic Church. She, as you know, she worked for years in India, helping the poor and um, destitute, especially uh, young children, babies. And uh, the, the, the followers of her, her um, school of, 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 of nuns are actually still in India now, working with, you know, in her, with her, on her work in Calcutta is in the uh, east northeast side of the country so she was made a saint yesterday and for those of you who don't know in order to be uh, named a saint you have to have two documented miracles and these were apparently uh, documented and accepted by the pope who made her a saint big celebrations all over india who who love her dearly so that's important now i wanted to change the subject and talk about you <laughs> I want to talk about you and your health and I just found a short little article that I wanted to share because it's important as you are sitting on this your seat today me too sitting here listening to me talk and not moving we sit down too much so today just do me a favor get up and get out because not does exercise only help your body that's you know all your important uh, parts of your body but it also helps your brain so here's how aerobics or resistance training can help boost your memory. These are all backed by research, and I'll put the link to this article so you'll know. So aerobics, fast moving or resistance training can help your memory. Yoga, which we um, are very a, fan, a big fan of, can help you with focus and concentration. So yoga is exercise that can help you with, with, with focus. High intensity interval training can help apparently tame your appetite. And uh, this is this is a good thing if you want to try to keep control of, of, a, of a healthy diet. But apparently, you know, just doing really fast interval, high intensity exercise can help curb your appetite. And and the other thing which I love to do, and it's fast moving walking, that can help you spur creativity. So if you walk, it's okay to walk leisurely sometimes and just have a look around. But really, the benefit comes from picking up the pace, moving your arms, and just having a good walk. So those are the four things that can help you to not only help your body, but help your brain. So there's some ideas for the day. Now, I want to shift gears and talk about something that um, may be of interest to some of you. And it's an article, um, well, it's really based on an interview that I did with a lady called Dr. Margaret Rutherford. Now, Dr. Margaret is a, um, a psychologist and she has done a lot of work on, um, you know, just the aging process and how our, our bodies and minds change during that time. But I talked to her about something that she's writing a book about, which is um, perfectly, um, what does she call it, perfectly hidden depression. Now, a lot of women in our community 
talk about being depressed, being lonely, being anxious about something. And we all, we, I always get the feeling when I read these feed, this feedback that it's something that people feel a little bit guilty or embarrassed about talking about. And so I wanted to share this uh, interview that I did with Dr. Margaret because in it we talk about how this is really you know how a lot of women protect themselves from emotions that they need really need to deal with and they have a, they're very good as she talks about hiding it <laughs> hiding it from their family and their friends and again because they consider it a weakness or a kind of flaw in their personality and what she says is, is really it's just your brain's response to internal and external pressures that we're putting on it and mentions of course that as older women all throughout our lives we have done things to please other people you know we've done we want to be strong for our families um, you know not not to show our children that we may be uh, unhappy or upset about something to be strong for them um, as uh, workers we wanted to be competitive in the marketplace and show ourselves to be in control and not emotional and so we, we learned skills over our lives to hide this uh, sadness or hide this depression that we sometimes feel. So really, I just wanted to raise this today um, in case it's something that you're experiencing. Have a listen to the, to the um, video interview I did with Dr. Margaret and read the article. And perhaps there'll be some ideas there for re-engaging with your emotions, um, perhaps doing a life review that helps you to get in perspective the positive things in your life that you've done and to put uh, feelings of depression in perspective. And you know, just really try to um, start the week with a new positive attitude to yourself and to your life. And the community here is help, here to help you too. If you've got something on your mind, put it in the section below. Let's talk about it. Let's help each other. That's, that's really what we're here for. So you deserve to be happy. <laughs> and this is, a, this is a way to take that depression that we hide, perfectly hidden depression, and how we can let it be resolved. Now, you know we do these funny, um, these funny days that celebrate, you know, ice cream day or cheesecake day. Well, today is a funny one. It's be late for something day. And if you're a bit like me, I'm always on time. I always try to not be late for anything. I'm at the train station 10 minutes before the train. <laughs> I'm always you know, ready and prepared. If you are a little bit controlled by your clock, well, here's a day you have my official permission to be late for something. Just try it out <laughs> and maybe just a minute or two if, if, it, if it really upsets you. But you know, if you're established, this is actually was established by the way this day by the Procrastinators Association of America. <laughs> there is one, people who like to put things off. So they have this special day where they just uh, suggest you just be late for something and stop and smell the roses once in a while. Just take your time and uh, don't rush, don't rush so much. I think that's a fun day. I don't know what I'm going to be late for today. Uh, it's kind of a quiet day here, so maybe I'll um, I'll just find some something that I was I'm always on time for and be a little bit late. <laughs> Perhaps you can do the same and share your share what you're doing below. It'd be fun. So I'd like to close today, as I do um, usually with a quote, and this is one that I I actually follow it myself and I, I remind myself about it a lot because it's one of these things that we kind of loop. In, in our minds and we bring it back now and again. And it, it's good to remind ourselves about this. And that is simply, you can't start the next chapter of your life if you keep rereading the old chapter. And I think that is so true that you just basically you have to start a new chapter by forgetting what happened in the past and just letting it go. So you can't start the next chapter of your life if you keep reading the old chapters. So start a new page today. And my question for you today is a very, very simple one. I'd love to know, you know, what is something in your life that you would like to let go of? I really think that would be interesting. Leave your comments in the section below. We'll have a, have a chat, have a conversation. And also, before I go, I want to remind you that if you do love these mornings with 60 and Me, if they're becoming part of your day now, which I'm really thrilled about, then just go up to 60andme.com forward slash mornings and sign up to receive uh, the news first. That would be really helpful for me. So I show your support. Thank you. So my question again for today is what is the one thing in your life that you'd like to let go? Maybe there's two. So something in your life that you'd like to let go of. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Have a good Monday and we'll see you all back here tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me.
Bye for now.